Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Tuesday morning Bible study. This here is Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams of Born to Again to Rise Ministries. I come to you with the love of the Lord, and I come to you this morning just to give out what the Holy Spirit has given unto me. And I thank God this morning for life and for godliness. And if it wasn't for the Lord, I know where I'd be. Some people say they don't know. I know where I would be. And I thank God that I am here today. I'm still standing. I thank God that through it all, oh, yes, I can. And see, that's the name of right now, Tuesday morning. It's, oh, yes, I can. And we're still on the fruit of the Spirit. And with the fruit of the Spirit, we're on the word of faithfulness. We've gone through several of them, but I just want to go back and I just want to reiterate the fruit of the Spirit before I go a little further this morning. Because I also have some announcements as well. Because when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we're talking about the nature and the character of God. And that's what we're going for. We're going for God's nature. We're going for God's character. We have our own little nature. We have our own little ideology and everything. But what do God say about you? And see, I want what God says about me, not what I say about myself. Because, see, I can say a lot of things about myself, but if it don't line up with the word of God, I'm just talking out the side of my neck, and I'm just being for real. But I want to look like God in this time. I want to be the Bible that some people see. Because, see, some people may never read the Bible. They may only see you. And so, therefore, we have to be that example in the earth of what God wants for us. So, therefore, it says in uh, Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. And I've read 22 through verses 25. And I've read down to 25 because, see, it's important. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to know who we are in him because see it's all about him and it's not about me so i thank god that it's all about him and like i said it's called he have given me the title oh yes she can and one thing that i know anytime that god gives you a word he gives it to you first before he allow you to give it out to anybody else and so here it is it's called oh yes she can on tuesday mornings on thursday evenings it's called i am and i have to also encourage myself all the time that who i am because see the devil would try to tell me that who i'm not but i have to be able to say who i am i am the righteousness of God. I am relaxed. I am calm. I am disciplined. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am prosperous. I am wealthy. I am an overachiever. I have to tell these things to myself. And if I don't, I mean, all kind of words can just come and flood you and make you think very low of yourself. And so therefore, that's what a lot of times people get with that low self-esteem. So I don't want low self-esteem. I wanted that high, 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 high. And so therefore, that's why I I know that God talks to me and I pray and I believe that God will speak to you too as well because he's no respected person. So it's not just that he'll speak to me, but he won't speak to you. He will speak to all of us. It's just that are we listening? Amen. Praise God. And um, before I get involved, um, I need some volunteers. Praise God. I need some volunteers. I said it. I said it. I said it. Uh, there's a lot that's going on in my life. I cannot do it all on my own. And uh which is, although Thursday is called I Am, it's also called The Last Man Standing. I don't want to be the last man standing. I don't want to be standing by myself. And I know that it starts with one. God has given me the one. So therefore, I need others to come alongside of me and work with me to help with me. Because um, you've heard me talking about it next year. God has given me my first inaugural conference. Have I done a conference before? No. Have I helped people with conferences? Yes. But have I done my own? No. So this isn't new for me, but I know how it takes more than one person. So I need some volunteers. I need some who will come beside me, work with me, help me. I mean, I got a lot that needs to be done. The conference will be held May 
15th through May 17th of 2020, and it will be held in Hilton Head, South Carolina. And I just visited Hilton Head. It's a beautiful place. I've never been to Hilton Head. I went there because the Lord said so, and I know that God is going to do something in South Carolina, and I need some people who will come work beside me. So if you're interested in helping me and working beside me, you can instant message me, and you can let me know uh, how your level of commitment. I mean, I need your time, your talent. If the Lord say your resources, hey, I ain't got no job. And anything that you would give to the ministry would go to the ministry, not to me. Because, see, I'm taking my resources and I'm giving to the ministry. Because one thing that I know, God has allowed me to be a good steward over all that he has given to me, that nothing I have belongs to me. It all belongs to him. So I know that with much is given, much is required. So I thank God for his faithfulness to me. Because see, I said it before and I'll say it again. I haven't worked for a paycheck in over 10 years. It's been what, 10 and a half years since I had to get up and go out and work for a paycheck. But God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So I thank God that he is still taking care of me. And so therefore, God is so faithful in my life and I pray that you allow God to be faithful in your life as well. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to get started this morning because I'm not going to be before you long. We finished uh, last week we did uh, up to Joshua 15th. We've been in the uh, book of Joshua and Joshua is uh, Joshua is he was Moses' mentor. Uh, Moses, mentee. Moses was his mentor. So therefore, he took over with the children of Israel and he had to go and the, complete the assignment that Moses didn't finish. Because see, Moses got to the point, Moses had got a little upset with the people. And when he got upset with the people, he became just a tad bit disobedient. But he became the, that tad little small piece of disobedient that God said, I can't use you anymore. He said, Moses, I'm going to allow you to see into the promise. But I'm not going to allow you to walk into the promise. I want to be able to not see the promise. I want to also be able to step into my promised land. I want to see you all to step into your promised land. Because see, I think that the, no, I know. The most expensive place in the world is the cemetery. That's because people have died with their hopes, they've died with their dreams, and they have never stepped into the promise. And sometimes, you know, it's like, well, gee, where did the idea come from? God dropped nuggets into us all the time. Some of us, you know, go working for a check, and some of us are just to be entrepreneurs because God has given you a witty idea. God has said, okay, your talent is, um, your talent is, um, oh. Okay, say for instance, <laughs> you may be nosy, okay? So all of a sudden you nosy. Well, all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, maybe I could be a private eye. What does it take to become a private eye? You may be health conscious. Oh my goodness, maybe I become a health coach. You may just like to help people with their problems. Maybe I become a life coach. Maybe you like doing numbers. Mm. Let me go to tax school. See whatever happens. God gives us something. It's like I like to try to help people find problems to their solutions. Maybe I become a counselor. There's so many things that God has given us. So many things. You may love children. Okay, there you go. Open up a daycare. Do whatever. Put your hand to a good work. And see, that's what God told Joshua. He told Joshua so many times, be of good courage. Let your hands be strong. He knew that there was some strength in our hands. Okay, you're called to write. Write your book. I'm talking to myself right now. Because, see, I've started so many manuscripts, but I haven't finished any. This is my time. This is my season. This is why I also need help. Because, see, i got to finish some stuff. I'm going to finish my race. I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to finish those books. Because I know that there's people that's waiting on me. It took me three years to do this. And there were people that were waiting on me. Some of them could have fell off. Some of them could have died. I don't know. But guess what? I'm going to do everything that God has told me to do in this season. Praise God. God. So here it is. We're in the 16th chapter of uh, Joshua. And in the 16th chapter of Joshua, this is Ephraim and West Manassas. And here it is. Once again, the children of Israel have not taken over everything that the Lord has told them to do. And it says, uh, verse 16 and 1, 
the lot fell to the children of Joseph from the Jordan by Jericho to the waters of Jericho on the east to the wilderness that goes up from Jericho through the mountains to Bethel. Then out from Bethel to Luz, passed along the borders of the Achites to Araf and went down westward to the boundaries of the Jebusites, as far as the boundaries of the Lord Beth Haran to Gezer and it ended at the sea. So here it is. We're talking about the inheritance of John, of John. Mm. Lord Jesus. We're talking about the inheritance of Joseph's children, Manasseh and Ephraim, as they took their inheritance. God has an inheritance for each and every one of us. And as I've read these little, uh, read these sections and these lots that have given them, all of these sections and these lots, they have boundaries and they all connect to water. We need water in our life. And here it is. When I think about the water, I think of the anointing. When we're dry, and we in a thirsty place. And that anointing has just dried up because I'm not reading my word. I'm not studying my word. I'm not praying. I'm not looking to God to anything. I'm just about my own business. It's just like that water. That water would dry up. That well would dry up. Your anointing would dry up. And when your anointing would dry up, you wonder why I can't do this. And I can't do this. And this isn't working. And that isn't working. Well, guess what? It's not working because you took God out of the equation. We have to keep. God in the equation so we don't dry up. When our skin, uh, we get sunburned. Okay, I have been experiencing sunburn. As I get sunburned, my nose begin to peel. My cheeks get real red and rosy and everything because I get sunburned. And when I get sunburned, I got to go and I got to lubricate myself. I got to be able to get that thing where it's flexible again, where it's pliable. But other than that, it's, to me, it's like it gets, uh, you know. So therefore, we need to lubricate. We need to give in the Word. We need to spend time in the Word. We need to allow the Word of God to lubricate our hearts, lubricate our minds, so that we won't dry up. So therefore, we got to learn how to take over some stuff. Well, you know, one thing I could, you know, I always recognize that whenever you are ready to get into the word of God, the devil know how to come by and make you sleepy. All of a sudden, you was like bubbly and everything. I'm going to read my word. I'm going to study. Then all of a sudden, the spirit of sleep, like, bam. And people are like, well, if you ever got insomnia, all you got to do is read the Bible. You know what? It's a disgrace that we do that. But I'm going to tell you, that's what the devil does. He doesn't want us to get full. And I was thinking this morning, like, okay, how do we look at our glass? Do we look at it as half empty or half full? We got two ways of looking at it. Is it half empty or is it half full? And I'm going to look at it always as being half full because, see, when I'm running on empty, I know I need an infilling. So, therefore, the children of Israel, they did not take over all of the land that they supposed to. They received the inheritance. But here it is. I talked about a few ites that you don't hear much about. And these ites that they were talking about are some of the ites that we have in our eyes. There's some things that God told us. Don't do it. In some places, he said, don't go. Some people, he say, cut off. But we still want to keep our little people with us because, you know, they mean so much to me. And we walked together for a long time, you know. And they may be my cousins. They may be my brothers or whatever. Guess what? God said, don't worry about your family. Don't worry about where you're going to eat. Don't worry about you're going to live. He said, I'm going to take care of you. And we got to get it to the point where we allow the Holy Spirit to take care of us. Because, see, if I take care of myself, guess what? God is not in the equation. So, therefore, I don't want to take care of myself because I'm not going to take care of myself like God wants to take care of me anyway. And the beauty about God is it's that he sent his son Jesus. And he said, Jesus became poor. So that you and I may become rich. I want to be so rich in my spirit that when that demon come around me just like that, I want to tell that little nasty joker, you got to go foul spirit. You can't stay here. I'm not your girl. I'm not your candidate. You got to get up out of here. And then I'm going to have so much power in him just like that little thing. That mosquito, the mosquito going to come and he going to bite me. And by the time that mosquito going to bite me, that mosquito going to drop dead and die. And he going to say, my God, the blood ain't never lost his power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's just the way I want to be with God. You know, it may sound funny, but that's just me. That's the way I feel. I want to be so close to God. I want to be just like, uh, I think it was what, John and uh, Peter, like, he loved me the best. He loved me the most. Well, you know what? We always sometimes, you know, women be so silly. They be fighting all about, you know, them 
a man. They want the same man. Girl, there's so many more fish out in the sea. Guess what? My thing is this. I want God to love me so good that, you know, I ain't got to worry about it because I know that the blood ain't love lost its power. And when I think about love, I know love, it covers, it protects, it is joyful, it is peaceful, it is faithful. Oh my gosh. And I just want the love of God just to smother and cover me all over. It's like, God, come on. I mean, you know, just whatever you want me to do, just love up on me. And that's what I wanted to do. I just want to hear his voice. And whatever it is he tell me to do, I just want to be obedient. I just want to do it because I know that I have sacrificed some things not being obedient. But I got the revelation that obedience is better than sacrifice. The first time when I heard that thing, it gave a light bulb came on. And I mean, sometimes, you know, my mind, it forgets this, that, and the other. But that's one thing. Isaiah 1 and 19, it ain't never forgot. And I tell you, I have posted it all up around my house. I got that thing posted. I want to keep it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. At this time, we ain't got no business sacrificing ourselves for the devil. Because he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so here it is. I'm going to take you to uh, 16 verse 10. And Joshua, you're going to drop down. It says that, and they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell among the Emirates to this day and have become forced laborers. When we don't do what God tells us to do, and we still want to keep all those ites with us because we think our ites are tight with us, we sometimes will become slaves to their sin. And when we become slaves to their sin, we are not in the will of God. And we never want to become slaves to sin. We want to get able to get it everybody out. Although these Israelites possessed the land, which was their inheritance, they still did not kick out everybody from their inheritance. If I know I got an inheritance, I ain't going to let you come up in there and steal my money. You lost your mind. No. We got to learn how to kick some stuff out, but we still want to hold on so tight. Sometimes we just need to like, let that thing go. Go on, boy. What they say? Bye, Felicia. Hey. No, we got to learn how to let some stuff go because that's what God wants us to do. And here it is. They did not fully conquer. God said as born again believers, child of God, we are more than conquerors than he who loved us. And we got to know that God loves us so much that he wants us to overcome and conquer everything that he has told us to put our hands to. And when he does, he tells us to be of good courage. He told Joshua to be of good courage. And because he told Joshua, you better believe it. I know Joshua told the children of Israel because every message that was related from Moses to God God gave that word to Joshua. Joshua also spake to Caleb. And because between the three of them, I know, I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt, they also gave that word to the Israelites. But see, these were the younger generation. The younger generation, they're lazy. The younger generation not even feeding themselves like the parents of old did. The parents of old, I mean, they had their own they had their own traditions, which was, a lot of it was tradition of men. But God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh that your sons and your daughters, they're going to prophesy. And the old men, that they're going to dream dreams. But see, we got to get into the word of God so God can do these things. We got to have that relationship. We got to have that connection so that he can do these things for us. Because see, he's just not going to give us that dream. And all of a sudden, we just like blow it off. No, when he give you that dream, it's because he wants you to put your hand to a good work. And it may get to the point to say, well, I don't think I can do this. Well, guess what? You can't do it, but you can do it through him. Just like I couldn't think I could do this because I had all the reasons why I could not do it. And because I had all the reasons why I had all the procrastination in the world. I ain't doing it. You got to be kidding me. No, I ain't doing this. But I kept saying, I, 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 I stays alone. And I stood alone and I caught hell because I was out of the will of God. And then this song back in the day that Ron Canoli did back in the 80s. If you catch hell, don't hold it. Go through, go through, go through. I had to go through the process. And one thing, you know, we don't like to do. We don't like to trust the process because, see, the process, it does get hard. But we have to understand it may get hard, 
But we got a sovereign God. My God, my God, we got a sovereign God. And because he is so sovereign and he is so good, it don't matter. It may look hard to me. It may look hard to you. But you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We got to learn how to exercise those spiritual muscles. When we get to exercise in those things, there is no limit. There is no boundaries of what God can do. And what he say? There is no secret what God can do. Because the beauty of it, God is not withholding anything from you. He's not holding anything from me. He is not withholding nothing. When McDowell said it best, withholding nothing. No, God is not withholding anything. And I thank God that he's not withholding anything. Because, see, people withhold their love. They withhold their money. They withhold their stuff, you know. But he did I understand my stuff don't even belong to me. Everything I got, it all belongs to God. So God has given me stuff. He has given me peace. He has given me joy. And he has shown himself to be so faithful. And I'm just like, Jesus. I get excited. I get excited when I think about Jesus. I get excited about all he has done for me. And my soul just cries out hallelujah because God has set me free, I tell you. And it said, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I tell you, I am not a bond servant. I mean, I'm a bond servant from the Lord, but I'm not one of those women that's all tied up, you know, and all twisted up. You don't know, but no. I mean, I am so free to, I tell you, I can just scream and just tell the whole world how free I am. I feel so, so good just knowing being being free and I tell you it's a wonderful thing being free because see so many people they're not free in their minds they're not free in their spirit man and see when you're free in your spirit man it doesn't matter what is going on around you you're still excited about the day and I tell you I thank God for still being excited about the day there could be hell going on in my life but I'm gonna tell you something I don't allow that hell to be who I am because see I have allowed that hell to be like water off of a duck's back because see I'm not allowing the water and the oil to mix, you think you understand what I'm saying. And I'm not going to try to mix the two because it's going to never come together, no way. So therefore, I always want to be in the will of God. I always want to be where God wants me to be. I want to be that example. I want to be that representative of God in the earth. I want to be that Bible that some would see. Everybody ain't going to like my Bible, but guess what? They say, it don't take all that. You don't know the hell that I have been through. You don't know my story, okay? So you don't know what it takes for me to be like I am right now. If I wrote right now my book and if I wrote my story, you would be really in disbelief. You were like, you got to be tell kidding me. And I was thanking God the other day how people wanted to break me. But glory to God, no matter all those who tried to break me and wanted to break me, God would not allow me to break. I had my moments when I would cry myself to sleep. I had my moments when I was crying. Yes, I did. But you know what? Because of the glory of God and the grace of God and the peace of God, I've cried my tears. I prayed for them. I've given over them to the Lord. And God has worked me out. I don't know what he's done to my accusers or my abusers or those who attacked me, talked about me. Whatever. I don't know. And that doesn't bother me. But God has said, you, uh, you forgive those who spitefully misuse you. And, you know, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. No, he ain't kidding. He's for real. He's for real. Forgive him. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Forgive them. It's okay. It's okay. Because when you forgive them, you've released yourself. And that's how I am so free. Because people who I know who have done stuff over the years... I mean, since I was a little girl, you know, you get to taking that stuff some time and that stuff get to piling up and piling up and piling up. And all of a sudden, that thing be like, boom, people exploding because they allowed so much to, of the world to just pile up. The God said, cast all your cares upon me. Leave it there. All the cares of the world that I have, I left it there. My cares, my God, they were many. But I learned to take those cares and I learned to leave them at the foot of the cross. I've learned to leave them there. And, you know, it's easy to pick stuff back up, you know. I mean, I sometimes will pick up my backpack and carry my backpack sometimes and get so heavy. And it's like, girl, what you got up in there? And when I take my backpack, I got my computer, I got my Bible, I got my books, I got this, I got that. And if I put the backpack on the uh, scale, it probably weighs 25 pounds or more. But guess what? That's a heavy load. 
And God never told us to carry no heavy load like that on our back. No, we got to learn how to release some stuff. We got to learn how to let some stuff go. And we got to learn how to get that anointing flowing just like that river of water. And here it is with all that God has given to the children of Israel. He gave them all land and all the land, all the inheritance. Everything had that river of water because without the water, the livestock, the cattle, the people, everything would die. Without the anointing, we would die. We would be perplexed. We would be crushed. We would seriously die. And we don't want to die in this season. So we want to keep keep going and we want God to be who he said he is in this season. God said he's faithful, so we're going to have to learn to trust him at his word to know that he is a faithful father. So we're going to have to learn to follow him. We're going to have to learn to listen to him. We're going to have to learn how to get some of the Jezusites and some of the Pesachites out of our lives and, and some of those people become giants. And when I go over to chapter 17, it talks about some of those people have become giants and because they came giants and because the children of Israel didn't clear out everything that they should have cleared out. It was like, okay, we got all this property, but we really don't have it all because, see, we still allowed all these other people to dwell where God told us to get them out the land. And because we have allowed them still to dwell there, everything that I could have and that I could own, I don't have. So they go to Joshua, Joshua. This is just too small to hold all of us. And I believe Joshua said, well, you know you're stronger than you thought you are. And they're like, what you talking about? You're men of war. You're men of war. You know who you are. So because you know who you are, do what you know to do. Do what you know to do. Get them out of the way. Go cut down the trees. Go to the mountains. Go to the high place. Clear the land. And then you'll find that there's room for you. God wants us to clear out some stuff so he can make room for other stuff. But some of us, as time have gone on, we have become hoarders. Hoarders of people, hoarders of stuff, hoarders of food, hoarders of junk, hoarders of whatever we can get our hands on that we're going to be just like a baby. It's mine, 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 mine. And God can't get nothing else to you because we hold it on so tight. And we think everything we got belongs to us. But when you become a steward and a servant of Almighty God, you own nothing. Nothing do you own. So here it is. Those giants, they had to get rid of those giants in order to occupy what belonged to them. Some of us got giants in our land and God said, get them giants away from you. Get boo-boo and get Kanisha away from you. I got more for you. But see, I can't bless you until you get them out. You don't have to keep holding on to stuff. Let it go. Goodwill would love to have your stuff. And when they get your stuff, write your little stuff off. You may need the tax write off at the end of the year anyway. But we got to learn to get the giants out of our land. We got to be able to tap into the anointing. We got to be able to let God be God in our lives. And when we don't, we deny what God wants to do for us. And then sometimes some people begin to uh, get to the point where it's, well, God, well, God. No, it ain't well, God. God's been waiting on you. He's been waiting on me. He's been waiting on me over three years, y'all. I don't mind telling my truth. He's been waiting for over three years for me to do this. He's been waiting for over three years for me to do the word of the day, but I kept denying myself. So now it's, I, it's not that I'm going to catch up because I can't catch up because, see, he's redeemed the time, but I can't not buy back the time. And, see, that's why people live in regret because they do all that they're going to do, and here it is all of a sudden just... For instance, I'm going to say somebody passed away. There's something that they wish they should have, could have, and could have done, but they don't do. But then all of a sudden when somebody dies, they want to pull the body up out the coffin and they want to say, oh, no, we got time today. Every time I wake up in the morning, I get these two eyes open. I get another opportunity to do what God has told me to do. We all get the same opportunity. We all get the same 24 hours to do what God has called us to do. And so, therefore, we got to clear out the land. We got to get the giants out of our way. 
We got to know that there's no mountain so high that God cannot move out the way. We look at it as a mountain and God said, all I need is you just to speak to me. Watch me move that thing that you thought was just too hard. You sitting over there crying about it, don't know how you're going to get over it, that you think it's just too hard. I can't do this and I can't do it. He said, I never told you to do it. I told you just to put your trust in me and to have the God kind of faith, just to trust me. He said, because when you just trust me and when you just listen to me, there's nothing I can't do for you because you belong to me. So when we know who we belong to and whose we are, we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Good morning, Minister Barbara. Love you. Pray that all is well with you. Now we got to put our trust in God. We got to get rid of some of those sites. Them that see some of these sites that's in here that the children of Israel didn't get rid of. They became slaves to the children of Israel, and because they became slaves, and that's where all this interracial or mixed marriages and stuff came in. They began to get so comfortable with those who was living with them, and next thing you knew, they was doing the same thing. That's why God took their parents away early because here it is their parents got to doing what they knew to do when they were back in Egypt. They were doing all kind of things and you know they were still in bondage so to speak in their mind. We got to come out of bondage in our minds because see our minds become that battlefield. It becomes an explosive thing and that bond tells us what I can't do but God wants to say what you can do so we got to stop listening to the cares of the world and say, I'm going to get all this stuff out of the way because I want to inherit what God has for me. I'm going to get to my blessing. I'm going to push them people away. I know I'm a warrior in Christ. I know I'm going to exercise my muscles. I know I believe that there's power from God that's within me. I know that the Holy Spirit lives in me. We got to talk to ourselves because if I'm not talking to myself, guess what? There's an adversary who wants to talk me out of what God has for me. And see, he want to talk you out of your health. He want to talk you out of your wealth. He want to talk you out of your healing. He may want to talk you out of that new job that God has waiting for you, but all of a sudden the devil tell you, oh girl, you can't go get that job. You don't qualify. And I'm going to tell you like I tell my son, if God is a qualified promotion comes from God, not from man. God will make room for you when they say that you don't have it. And like I said, I haven't worked for a paycheck in over 10 and a half years, but guess what? Putting my son through college without any debt. When he came and, Ma, here's my degree. I wanted him to walk across the stage. He wouldn't do that for me, y'all, but that's okay. I got a degree with his name on it, but he don't have no debt. Because I did not want him to have debt. Because I did not believe he should start his life off in debt. Not knowing how he was going to make it tomorrow because of all these student loans. And one thing, that's what, I mean, you know, I know our kids should go to college. But if our kids don't want to go to college, don't make them go. Don't make them have a mortgage before they have a house. That's just me, okay? I did not go to college. I got a lot of certificates with my name on it. But I made pretty good money without walking across the stage and going to college. I don't knock that. I got siblings who got master's degrees. Some of them got two master's degrees. Then they're going for PhDs. Bless you all, okay? But I thank God for has God has given me wisdom not to go into debt because I thank God that I can say I am the lender and not the borrower. I am above. I am not beneath. Why can I say that? Because I'm a child of God. I have to believe whatsoever I say because I know that life and death is in the power of my my tongue and I can have whatsoever I say, okay, because it's in the word of God. So therefore God told the children of Israel, you are a great people and have great power. You shall not have only one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours. We got to know what belongs to us. We got to know what's available to us. And just what he told the children in verses 17, verses eight, uh, verse uh, 18, but the mountain country shall be yours. Although it is wooded, you shall cut it down, and its further extent shall be yours. You shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariot and are strong. He said, they, guess what? God knew they were strong. But he said, guess what? Although your adversary is strong, 
Child of God, you're even stronger because you got an advocate and his name is Jesus. Jesus is stronger than the devil all day long. The devil ain't but a counterfeit. He ain't but a fraudulent. He may look like the real deal, but let me tell you something. He ain't got nothing going for him. And my using a bonnets all day long is not because I don't have a college education, y'all. It's because I know the real deal. He ain't got nothing. No. Because, see, he think he does, but he does not. But we got to advocate, oh, my Lord, anything you need, child of God. He said, what do you need, son? What do you need, daughter? Just come to me as little dear children. It says, suffer not the little children, forbid them not to come unto me. He want us to have childlike faith. If you just had the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you could speak to your mountain, and that mountain got to be moved in the name of Jesus. I don't mind speaking to my mountains because when I speak to my mountains, I know those things got to go. And when I know those things get to going and get the moving the things get to go oh jesus 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 i get to go and find god all over again because i'm like go daddy go daddy go daddy go i tell you i love my natural daddy yes indeed but when i think about my heavenly father oh my god jesus go jesus go jesus go i am just so excited about what he's doing in my life and i'm just so excited what he's doing in your life and what he is doing in this season and i tell you i get to also you know Bishop Paul Morton said, whatever it is he's doing in this season, I don't want him to do it without me. Whatever God is doing in this season, I don't want him to do it without me. I don't want God to do it without you. It's our time. It's our season. Yes, it is. This is our time for our breakthrough. It's about the kingdom, y'all. This is kingdom business. This is our time to bring in our sons, bring in our daughters, our nieces, and our nephews to let them know Jesus is real. And he's so real in my soul, I tell you. Because, see, we got a generation. They have their own idea of how to serve God. And the ideas that they have, it's the ideas of that they're taking it from here, a little piece from here, a little piece from there. And here it is that um, the way they're taking it is I heard, um, what's his name? Gosh. The little evil boy, please, Lord, please forgive me. No, I should have said the little evil boy. He don't smell, uh, oh gosh, Kanye West, yes. They say they got him in a pulpit now. I don't know what it's all about, but people are now listening to him. So here it is, young people are flocking to Conway. I can't even say the boy's name. Anyway, y'all know who I'm talking about. I've never listened to his music. I'm not in his generation. I'm not going to flock to his music. I'm not going to flock to his word. But see, we have to know how to rightly divide the word of God. We have to know how to divide truth. And people now are going to tell us anything and everything because they said there are false prophets in the land. And if we don't have a spirit of discernment and don't have the power of the Holy Spirit living and resonating on the inside of us, we're going to begin to believe what they say. But we got to know what does God say? What does God say? That's why it's important to get into your word. If there's power in the blood, there's power in the word. The blood still stands and we got to know that God is still faithful. Through it all, God has told us we have strength, we have power. We got to know that we know that we know without a shadow of a doubt who we are in him. And in him, we will be standing. And we know in him, oh yes you can. We can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. God is strengthening us. It don't matter your test. It don't matter your trial. Born again believer, you stand. You withstand and you don't give the devil no play. Don't give him no voice in your life. When he come to kill, steal, and destroy, you come and you tell him, oh, wait a minute, hold on, let me tell you something. My father said, he come that I have life, that I have life, and I have life more abundantly. You watch me. It don't matter what takes, you know, he take from you. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't worry about it. I had a house taken. I had a car taken. He even had a job taken. Who cares? I'm still standing, y'all. Like my sister say, my sister Betty know what I'm saying. Go, Jesus. Go, Jesus. Go. So it's not based on your little stuff. I have had my Job experience. Did I give up on God? No, but you know what I did do? I had a Job experience with the house, the job, the car, my health, everything, my money. Oh, yes, the money. Oh, Jesus, yes, the money. All that stuff went. I had my Job experience. And that experience and the pain and all that stuff that I suffered and I went through, I kid you not. This ain't the same Bible, y'all. I had to buy another one because somebody used to talk to me. But I used to put my feet fat 
footed on the word of God. God, your word say X, Y, Z. And I said, God, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. But I tell you, I suffered so much. I was in so much pain till I needed to hear from God. But child of God, I want you to know, I'm still standing. Y'all, I'm still standing. And I'll tell you, I feel so good because I did not give up on God because God did not give up on me. It wasn't about the stuff. It wasn't about the stuff. God is so real. Don't worry about the stuff you have. When you give it all over to God, it ain't yours no way. And God said, I'll give you double for my trouble. And one thing I know, God has given me double for the trouble that I've been in, the trouble that I've gone through. And he is so faithful. And I want you to leave. I want to leave you with this today. No matter what you're going through, trust God. Put your trust in God and not in man. And I ask that you invite somebody to this uh, broadcast, whether it be on the line of Facebook or whether it be on the call. Invite somebody next week. Invite somebody on Thursday evening. And like I said, I'm looking for some volunteers, somebody, not just somebody, I need somebody's, somebody's who will help me. Next year, we're going to uh, Nagra Conference, y'all. I'm following the Holy Ghost. Next year, May 15th through the 17th, 2020. Hilton Head Island, first inaugural conference. I am so excited. I am so excited what God is going to do. I need some volunteers, some people who will help me, who will work with me to help make this thing possible. And one thing I know that God is a rewarder in those who would diligently seek him. We can walk this thing out together. And the guy down at our hospitality at the um, conference hall, he already told me. He said, Deborah. I'm going to make you look good. And I tell you, I just know he is because when he makes me look good, he makes himself look good. And I tell you, he knows the power of the Holy Spirit. So God knows he's going to make us all look good because this here is God ordained. And God said that he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. Can I pay you? I don't know what God would do. It may be a stipend in there for you. I don't know. I ain't got no check, y'all. But however, look, there we go. Praise God. However, how God does it, however, how God work it out. Hey, I have taken my hands off of. I said, Lord, every day, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what God said. He said he's bringing heaven to earth. So therefore, I'm allowing him to bring heaven to earth in my life. Praise God. So therefore, uh, if you want to volunteer, want to be part of something that's going to be bigger than I, that's going to be bigger than you, it's the inaugural. It's the beginning. We're going to have our own inauguration. I'm telling you. I don't know about you. I love to have fun. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love. That's just who I am. I'm love. I'm love. And I can't do nothing but love. Praise God. So therefore, it's just going to be a time to love up on one another, love up on God, and just have a great time. So it's a weekend of friends, family, and fun. It's not a women's conference, y'all. It's easy for the women to get together. They can go back to, this is family. God is about family. Family was God's idea. And God wants to bring the family back together. And so, therefore, all right, sis, you and I got you tagged in. So, therefore, God wants to bring the family back. Because, see, the family has lost his drive. The family has fallen off. And that's what Joshua's all about. It's about bringing the family. The mom and the dad, they couldn't go because they didn't get connected. They didn't stay where they were supposed to stay. But God wants to bring the family back. And God told me before I was going to be with the repair of the breach. And the breach has been broken. But God wants to bring that thing back. He wants us to get back together. He wants us to get connected. Not just to say, I know you, but to say, I love you. Because, see, we're not going to sit down and eat a meal with just anybody. But you want to eat a meal with those that you love. I want to eat a meal with those that I love. Because if you don't love me and don't like me, you better. I ain't so, oh, You got to be serious. I ain't eating with you. I don't need no one nothing from your table. I'm just being for real, y'all. I don't even want nothing from your table. I'm for real, for real. That's my truth. Can't take it from me. And as being a certified uh, food service manager, hey, I know what I like and I know how clean I like it. So whatever, you know. I don't even go for whatever. Please, Lord, forgive me because I don't do whatever. No. But anyway, I'm looking for volunteers. I'm looking for volunteers the weekend of May 17th through the 19th. That's a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. I'm going to come in early on that. Um, I'm going to come in early. And I'm going to come in on that Thursday. And I'll probably leave on that Monday. 
But I tell you, if you want to come in early, you want to leave later or whatever, let me tell you, it's a beautiful place. And it's down in Hilton Head, South Carolina. It's an awesome family place. Bike rental. It's right on the ocean. Oh, my goodness. It's beautiful. Um, we're going to have two breakfasts included. And we're having a meet and greet and everything. I'm super excited. So, therefore, child of God, I look forward to seeing you all, meeting you. If we get to meet before then, hey, let me tell you, let's... Get this party started. I'm telling you, it's a party for Jesus. I'm ready to get this party started, y'all. God bless you all. I guess y'all can hear my little grandbaby in the background. So I got to go do me some grandma duties. I love, I love, oh my goodness. Well, I know we going to celebrate medicine. You come on, we going to throw you a party, sis. Yes, indeed, y'all. Let me tell you, this time last year, and then I'm going to get off the line. This time last year, I just came back from New Jersey. My sister, Minister Barbara, she did what the Lord told her to do. She had a little small play, but then the Lord told her to take that thing to the theater. She was like, God, you got to be kidding me. She was faithful. She took it to the theater and they packed that theater out. So go, Jesus, go, Jesus, go. But you know what? After she packed the theater out, the devil tried to came and steal her joy. But guess what? He ain't stole her joy, y'all. He tried, but he ain't stole her joy. He tried to take her through all kind of hell, but he ain't stole her joy because she know too we serve a faithful God. And I'm going to tell you something. For those of y'all who know me, I used to be a big girl, but I kept watching my sister. And I watched and I watched and I watched and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm laying on my sick bed not feeling good either. I can do what she doing. And I started getting up. She was my mentor and didn't even know it. So God would put all kind of people in your path. So don't despise some people. We sometimes don't know when we may be entertaining angels. She has been my angel and I thank God for her. So therefore, when we get down there to South Carolina, we're going to have a celebration, y'all. So I'm going to tell you something. Get your money together. Get yourself together. I'm going to get that fly together so we can get it out. Bring everybody. These are villas. A villa sleep four. Uh, that's a one bedroom villa. Uh, let's see. And what is that thing? Uh, two bedroom villa. Sleep six. So therefore, get your friends, your family together. We're going to have a good time. We're going to enjoy South Carolina, and South Carolina is going to enjoy us. Amen. God bless you all. I see you all. They may come on Thursday evenings. If not, I'll see you all Tuesday mornings at 11 o'clock. Like I said, I need volunteers, um, praise team set up. Uh, I need vendors also if you want to vend. Uh, love you, Corinne. Sweetheart, I got to call you. Uh, let's see. I need those who uh, could maybe do flies, do graphic artists. I need a website. I need a whole lot of stuff, y'all. And I thank God for each and every one of y'all. Love y'all with the love of the Lord. I could go on and on just letting y'all know how much I love y'all. I tell you, God is awesome. Praise God. Love each and every one of you. Have a blessed, safe, and a prosperous day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessings over each and every one of your children, Lord God. Whatever it is that they stand in the need of, oh God, give them the desires of their heart. That there will be no lacking in the name of Jesus, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That there's health, there's healing, there's prosperity, Lord God. Father, but most importantly, Lord God, that there's a relationship, oh God. We can't have these things if we do not have a relationship with you. So, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus that we get our vertical and our horizontal, right, oh God. That we come to, to the cross and we know you and we know you in the pardon of our sins. That we will be that B-I-B-L-E that the people will see, oh God. That we will, oh God, not taint our witness. But we will stand and withstand. And we know one thing for sure. Oh, yes, you can. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Be encouraged. Love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you all. Bye-bye.